Good morning everyone and welcome to this service today for the second Sunday before Lent and uh, my name is Jo, I'm vicar of Plains Church and St George's Church in Worcester, um, not Worcester in Massachusetts and not Worcester in South Africa, this is Worcester in Worcestershire, Middle England. Our claim to fame at the moment is not a good one. So we won't go there, but a lot of us here live in WR3, so let's <laughs> say no more. Our service this morning is a real treat. Um, we're going to be reflecting on creation and what it means that Christ was there from the beginning. And we're going to start our service with singing the beautiful song, From Heaven You Came, The Servant Song. Alison, could you unmute, please? Sorry, folks, I did unmute and it muted itself. From heaven you came, helpless babe. Entered our world, your glory veil. Not to be served, but to and give your life that we might live. This is our God, the servant king. He calls us now to follow him, to bring our lives as a daily offering of worship. 
worship to the servant king. There in the garden of tears, my heavy load he chose to bear. His heart with sorrow was torn. Yet not my will, but yours, he said. This is our God, the servant king. He calls us now. Let us pray. Almighty God, give us reverence for all creation and respect for every person that we may mirror your likeness in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now I invite you to join in with the responses to this prayer of thanksgiving. God, creator, sun maker, moon maker, star maker, in love you made us. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. God in Jesus, storyteller, healer, teacher, in joy you came for us. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Come here among us, comforter, listener, disturber, in justice you beckon us. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. We come to a time of confession. Creator God, we have turned our faces away from you neglecting our roles as stewards of your creation, ignoring the cries of your people, taking from the earth what we cannot give back. In the silence, as we bring to mind our failings, we pray for you to forgive us and lead us to a more gracious way of life. Star maker God, light of the world, forgive us and warm us into your love and life. Bring us to the word, the light of Christ, all the length and breadth of our nights and days. Amen. And now we go to 
Rev Peter, and he's going to introduce today's theme and activity. Good morning, everyone. It's a very easy one. Um, piece of paper, crayons, pencils, colours, and the other thing which I can't show you, and that's what you bring, is your imagination. <laughs> and in your imagination, can you um, imagine what it was like in those first few moments of creation when suddenly our Lord Jesus Christ, as we sang in that song, hands that flung stars into space. Can you imagine, can you draw what that might have been like? Very simple, and we'll have a look at um, what you've come up with a little bit later on in the service. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. And we're going to go now to our very first reading, and that is the lovely Pearl. Where is the lovely Pearl? She's going to read Colossians 1, 15 to 20. I know she's all the way up at home, Nash House, but I don't think it's that far. Are you there, Pearl? Yeah. Brilliant. Awesome. Well, done. start again, shall I? Yeah. yeah. He, he is the image of the invisible God. He is the primacy over all created things. In him, everything in heaven and on earth was created. Not only things visible, but also the invisible orders of thrones, sovereignties, authorities and powers. The whole universe has been created through him and for him. And he exists before everything and all things are held together in him. He is, moreover, the head of the body, the church. He is its origin, the first to return from the dead, to be in all things alone supreme. For in him, the complete being of God, by God's own choice, came down to dwell. Through him, God chose to reconcile the whole universe to himself, making peace through the shred shedding of his blood upon the cross to reconcile all things, whether on earth or in heaven, through him alone. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Paul. That was wonderful. Um, we're going to have our uh, uh, next song and this is There is a Redeemer and this has been pre-recorded by Alison I believe so There is a Redeemer
the Gospel according to John, chapter 1, 1 to 14. Over to Jan. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the world, world became flesh and dwelt amongst us, and we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, what do we make of all of that? Um, I live in postcode WR5, fortunately not in postcode WR3 at the moment, and I'm on the south side of Worcester. But here's the thing, I can see the M42 from where I live. And as you take that in, the alarm bells begin to ring and you think, should we send for the men in white coats? Has Peter lost the plot? Well, you can see the M42 from anywhere in the world. And I'll tell you how, because I'm not talking about the motorway parking lot around the south side of Birmingham. I'm talking about a different M42. And can I ask the Zoom drivers please to put up the slide of this? There we have it. This is the constellation of Orion that's visible into February, rising in the eastern sky, then moving across the southern skies and can you see three stars in the middle there? That's Orion's belt. That's just being highlighted for us. And then if you look down from there between the first and second stars on the left, uh, down to the bottom, you will see a fuzzy cloud of red light. That's a gas cloud, that's a, a nebula. And these are classified with the letter M and then a number. The letter M is after a French astronomer called uh, Charles Messier, and this is number 42. So there you are. If it's clear in the coming nights, pop outside, and in the morning, socially distance, tell your neighbours that you've seen the M42. The light that you are seeing coming to us from that nebula has taken about 1,340 years to get here. And it's a nursery for making new stars. New stars are still being created and the universe is expanding. So what about this universe? Give or take, it's about 13.8 billion years old. And it's spread out across the whole of the universe. It, then they're in groupings. Um, we, our galaxy is called the Milky Way, and if you get a, a clear dark night with no light pollution, 
and you look up, you'll see a ribbon of faint light spread across the heavens above your head. That's the Milky Way. And maybe there are 200 billion galaxies and each galaxy is made up of maybe between 100 and 200 billion stars. That is a lot of noughts. The numbers are mesmerizing. The distance is almost unimaginable. Yet in St Paul's letter to the Colossians, we hear the words, he Christ is the image of the invisible God the firstborn of all creation, for in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers, all things have been created through him and for him. Back in the mid-1970s, not long after I'd started working as a foreign exchange dealer in London, Three colleagues had been sharing their faith with me over lunch in the canteen. Now, yes, I did have a church background, and indeed it was in my early teens that I was asked to think about ordained ministry. But come my undergraduate days, rather sadly, I had let things go. But thanks to the prayerful witness of these three guys, I started going to a church which was quite near work in London. And I heard a sermon exactly on this passage. He Christ is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. And the penny dropped. Everything I'd been striving to understand fell into place. It wasn't dramatic. It was more a case of, all oh, right, so that's it. Oh, I get it now. I had the answer to my question, who is this Jesus? The passage tells us the deepest, deepest truths. It tells us that this Jesus was before time, before creation, before the Big Bang 13.8 billion years ago. Yet it tells us that this Jesus is the means whereby the whole of created order exists and is held together. It tells us that Jesus is first. It tells us that Jesus was there for the beginning. It tells us that this Jesus is above, over and in all. This Jesus is the cosmic Christ. That means if you ask what is God like, the answer is Jesus. And because it is God's very nature to love, it's God's very nature to liberate. Love always liberates. Love always sets free. That means love gives permission to leave or to stay to be loved. That's why it is the very nature of God to reconcile to himself all things. Everything that's all messed up in the world something only God can do. We cannot do it. We cannot make God be reconciled any more than we can stand in the garden at night and make the stars of the universe vanish. From the gospel passage, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. These poetic words that start St John's Gospel tell us of Jesus. John takes an idea in his day from the Greek schools of philosophy and he describes Jesus as the word, that's word with a capital W. We might find this a bit odd to get our heads round, calling someone the word, but I have a suggestion that might help. Now if you were in a Spanish-speaking church this morning with this passage, you would hear something slightly different. You would hear, in the beginning was the verb, not word, but in the beginning was the verb. A verb is about being, doing, action. In the beginning was the one who was, is, will be, who does. 
you begin to get the idea. The reality is that Jesus, the word, the verb, took human form to live among us and to reveal the love of God in what he said, did, and in how he died. If I were to give today a theme, I would say, look up, look up to the light. Look up, look up to the light. The language of light joins us to the start of the creation story in Genesis, right at the beginning of the Bible. God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. And it was a light, a pillar of flame, that guided the children of Israel across the wilderness in the story of Exodus. The prophet Isaiah foretold the coming sa saviour this way. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. And now in Jesus, the visible presence of the Father's glory in Jesus' own words. He said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. So, look up. Look up to the light. Jesus makes God's presence real to us. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and of truth. This is an astounding verse of scripture because its reach is unlimited. It is for all. No one need be excluded. And when we respond to the call to follow Jesus, we live in the truth that Jesus is over all as creator and redeemer. We respond in the light that there is no other means for God to be reconciled to us when we've gone astray from his holy purposes. And as we choose to live in the light, we live in the truth that Jesus completed everything necessary in his life and in his death on the cross. Nothing can be added. No other than our Lord Jesus Christ could have and has accomplished it. Through Jesus, God offers an open invitation of welcome and acceptance. So, Look up, look to the light of the world, and in receiving this gift freely given to follow Jesus. And that is what it is to live in God's grace and truth. Amen. Well, thank you, Peter, for those very um, powerful and inspiring words. And I, I will uh, very happily go out and <clears throat> look at the stars tonight and I think that's where I've always seen God um, uh, even from a, a very small child looking up at the sky at the universe and just recognizing the the infinite love and power of God we're going to sing about that now um, this song is new to me um, but having been introduced to it last weekend I now can't sing anything else <laughs> so I hope you'll pick it up quickly too. Um, it's got a really great chorus, so um, do join in. Over to Alison. Great is the darkness that covers the earth, oppression, injustice, and pain. Nations are slipping in hopeless despair, though many have come in your name. Watching while sanity dies Touched by the madness and lies Come 
great commission complete, then face to face we shall be. Come, Lord Jesus, come, Lord Jesus, pour out your spirit, we pray. Come, Lord Jesus, and pour on us your spirit today. We go to our prayers from Judy. Thank you. As we pray this morning, we're going to be thinking about the levels of, of our existence, if you like. So first of all, we're going to pray for the whole world, for the whole of creation. And perhaps it might help you if you join in this this movement, the great circle, and recognising that we are within that circle, one small part of the great creation that God has made. And each of us has a, a part to play. Especially we have a part to play in ensuring that the nature that we have inherited, we pass on to our children, improved and not worsened. We need to be better stewards of God's world. We need to think global, but to act local, to make a difference where we are. But this creation also includes all the nations of the world all of which at the moment are troubled in one way or another. COVID-19, political differences, civil wars, insurrections, effects of global warming. We offer all this world created and human to God. Lord, where there is darkness, let your light shine. We pray for the church, perhaps you'd like to make the sign of the cross. We pray for the church all around the world we pray for the leaders of the church. We pray for archbishop and for our bishops. We pray for our own diocese in this time of financial difficulty and of changes of deaneries. We pray, Lord, that above everything else, we may remember our power, our energy, our focus needs to be on proclaiming Jesus Christ creator, redeemer, saviour. Lord, in all the dark places, let your light shine. We pray for our own community. Maybe a big hug. I think our communities need big hugs at the moment, don't they? all our neighbours, our friends, our NHS, our local hospitals, all those who are struggling every day at the end of their tethers, all those who are weary, who are depressed, who are stressed, those who are victims of domestic violence, those whose finances are worrying, and they don't know how they can go on. But it also embrace all those who love and care for those around them, all our neighbours who do much to help each other. 
We thank you, Lord, that there are so many lovely, caring and dedicated people. Give them strength and courage and vision in all the dark places. Lord, let your light shine. And then we hold before God in the palm of our hands all those we love, all those we are worried about, those who are sick, those who are lonely, those whom we miss so much, those who mourn, those who have died. We give them all, Lord, into your loving hands. In all the dark places, Lord, let your light shine. In silence, we pray our own prayers before we come together in the words of the Lord's Prayer. We say together, <laughs> our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Joe, you're muted. Sorry. Um, I thought it would be really good to see some of the pictures now. Uh, I noticed we've got Indy, Rose and Luca with us today, which is fabulous. We've got Lily and Raya. I think there's Amelie as well. Um, and jo James. So hopefully, um, and I know some of the adults love to do pictures. So do hold them up and unmute yourself if you want to say something about your lovely picture. Let's have a look. This is Judy. I did mine before we saw Peter's pitch, picture. Uh, no, the, there was a picture before the reading and I just thought it was surprisingly similar. Very crude. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Judy. Good work. Oh, Phil, that's fabulous. Oh, it's Jan's drawing with... Jan. Yeah, Jan's drawing with a cross at the centre of uh, the creation. And then water, earth, stars, oh. millions of galaxies. And in the corner, I've drawn an atom. Okay. Because that's what it's all about. Proton, neutron, and electron. In its Not to size. <laughs> Fabulous. Well done. We've had a bit of a science, well, a physics lesson as well today, haven't we? Anybody else? We'll come back to Jan Hayden. Oh, wow, two here. Sue Cotton. We do you, and then we'll go to Indy Rose and Luca. Sue, can you unmute yourself, please? Oh, there you go. Oh, it's Jeff. This yeah. is Jeff. Uh, unfortunately, as a physicist, that's how I visit, visualise it. That's great. And uh, it, the, the one thing that the big argument that uh, scientists have, which seems to be we can manage anything, is not true because we've just had another uh, situation where dark matter and dark energy has suddenly come into the picture. And we, we, we have faith in that that is going to be done. So it, it's faith, it's not just, we can do it ourselves. Absolutely. Um, Jeff, I, <clears throat> I, I, I actually noticed that yours looks rather like a, a crown of thorns as well. 
Mm. So it's an interesting parallel. So Indy Rose and Luca, unmute yourselves and let's have a look at these amazing pictures. So this is wow. Indy Rose's around her hand. And wow. this is Luca's. Oh, good work, you lot. That's and brilliant. Says, In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. That's We're fantastic. We're going to put them in our window. Well done. Very good work there. Anybody else? Anybody, we'll go back to Jan Hayden if there's nobody else. I have to swipe across. Oh, is that uh, Lily? Unmute yourself, Lily. Let's see yours. I created flash flashcards. Oh, cool. Okay, then. Here we go. So, first, first the light was created. Yeah. Then the sky. Right. And oh, yeah. then the dry land, the plants and trees. Okay. And then the, sky, the sun, the sky, the moon, and the stars. Oh, fabulous. Then the, the sea animals and the sky animals. And then oh. the land animals. Yeah. <laughs> then on the last day's rest, and then the earth. Fantastic. That's really good. You, you should be a teacher. <laughs> well done. Is Raya there as well? Yeah, I'm just in the middle of doing my hair. Okay, <laughs> not to worry. Not to worry. We won't worry. Anybody else? Uh, should we go back to Jan Hayden? She's on my screen. She's right back at the beginning. Where are you, Jan Hayden? I don't know. Ooh. There you go. Oh, can you read that for me? Well, what I've tried to do is I've written creation all the way around with lots of stars, different sizes. Oh. When Peter gave his sermon, I put M42. So it's my M42 that I can look at. You see. <laughs> so, uh, I, I didn't have um, any colouring pens with me and I didn't dare move because it will start the dog barking. So that's the reason it's just in <laughs> ink. <That's> okay. <laughs> fabulous. Well, that's a really great response today. Um, well done to you all. Um, let's, um, I, I think I've got, I've got a, a couple of notices and then we'll share the piece. So um, Sue Cotton is a wonderful um, real, well, fair, our fair trade lady, but she's also a real Easter egg lady. So um, Sue, could you just say, how do people order their eggs and why it's so important that we order them from you? Okay. Right, um, I'm just holding up the poster of the eggs for this year. Um, and you will find, if you, if you type in the real Easter egg or meaningful chocolate company in your internet search, you will get all the details. Um, but um, hopefully in the um, newsletter this week, if I've got all the information over to Joe, um, there will be more information about them. Um, the reason you should be buying these, they're fair trade. They've been um, trading for 11 years now. They've done ever so well. But this is the first year they're not in the supermarkets. Uh, the supermarkets are expecting lower uptake on Easter eggs anyway. People aren't seeing it, each other. So they have said no to stocking the real Easter egg. And this is the only one that's fair trade. But more importantly than that, it's the only one, as far as we know, that has the Easter story in, as, in booklet form as part of the egg. Um, so you're not only getting chocolate, you're getting your fair trade, you're getting the Easter story. Um, there's a competition for children in the, um, the, the basic eggs. Um, they can win up to 200 pounds if they do a competition and a drawing. Um, and also um, a lot of, of the money made goes to charity and goes to helping third world countries. So. I, I, I think all of that means that we should buy it. Um, I will put my details up on the chat in a minute, um, but Joe's going to put my email address and my phone number in as well in the newsletter for this week. So Brilliant. Um, I would like to have the orders by the end of Feb. They have given the 8th of March, but um, they have also said they've got limited stock, so I don't <laughs> want to leave it too long. Thank you. That's brilliant. So, um, do, so do place your orders with Sue. Um, and I think that's, there's so many reasons there to buy one of those real Easter eggs. 
And um, we, we've actually ordered 90. So 90 little eggs are going to be going out to all our church families um, and all our church children. Um, so that will be happening at the end of this week. And the other thing I want to say is thank you very much to all the lovely people that have been knitting. I've got, I've got so many hearts now. Um, look at these ones. This is the Ladies Who Knit from Francis Court in Barbourne, and they actually come with a little hanger. So that's brilliant. Um, so I, I'm absolutely inundated now with hearts, and I, I'm going to be asking people to help me hang them up, because otherwise I'm going to be spending the whole of the 13th of February out hanging things up. So I'm sure you could all help me with that. Maybe some of the children would like to help. On your walks, obviously. On your walks, not to go specially. Um, so let's just take a moment now and just reflect on all that we've heard today. Um, some really powerful um, teaching and preaching today. Thank you, Peter and Judy, those beautiful prayers. Um, so let's just reflect and, and just welcome. Let's say, come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus, bring us your peace. Pour upon us your Holy Spirit. And so, Lord, to all of you, peace be with you. You might like to wave. Should we have a big wave? Peace be with you, everybody. Peace be with you. Virtual hugs to everybody. Oh, we miss you all so much. So we're going to have our final song now. And this is a, a good old one. I'm, no, I'm sure that you'll all know. Jesus is Lord. Over to, I think, Alison. Thank you. In how you got that organ in your front room, Alison. Very impressive. The blessing.
May the sun warm your soul and the moon be gentle above you. May the creator hold your hands and Christ walk in your footsteps. May the spirit lighten your darkness and grace be found on your way. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and all those you love and care for now and forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Well, thank you to everyone for joining us today. We're going to say goodbye to our Facebook followers now. And uh, please, if you're on Zoom, do stay behind for a chat and a catch up. And I think we've got some introductions today. So um, goodbye to everybody on Facebook. Thank you for following us. Please take care, stay safe. And if in doubt, go and get tested. God bless. Bye bye.